All right, hey traders, TG Watkins here. It is uh, November 17th, Thursday when I'm recording this. And to follow up on yesterday, a uh, short little video that uh, the intro thing, I was looking at the market and saying, you know, somehow, some way, we need to fix this gap between price and the hourly 50. And on the daily chart, the gap between price and the daily eight. And um, I wasn't quite sure if we were going to get it with just a flag or if it was actually going to dip down to it. And obviously today we got our answer. You can see here is where it was previously. And there was today. We dropped down to those moving averages, filled that gap. And now kind of the question is, okay, is this going to be support and we go higher? Or do we actually go lower before we get a bounce? Um, now I'm kind of of the camp where well, it's still a little bit mixed, but I've been looking at the UVXY and uh, as I said, a little mixed, a little bit between a rock and a hard place on this thing. Uh, it does seem to me overall that I think we are kind of losing strength. I'm seeing a lot of indications out there that things are just very, very high and should be working their way down. Um, I'm not getting some of the clearest information from, say, the SPY, but I am getting some better information from other things out there. So I'll take you kind of around the, the journey and showing you what I see and um, that I, I think that I'm going to be leaning towards the case that price is probably going to fall off of the hourly 50 and go a little bit lower before actually going higher. So I'm kind of thinking that we might need to actually test the daily 21, maybe maybe a little bit below the 21 before we actually see the next move up. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth that I'm going to be explaining in through here. So basically the big picture is I think we'll go down like this, then we'll have to see about up, see where it wants to go. And then I do think we're going to probably roll over again later. You know, typically things don't just, you know, go straight down like that. They do go down, try to retest and then go. So something to that extent. And you'll be seeing that theme play out in the tickers and things that I show uh, tonight in all of this. Uh, if I were to really follow my rules, they would generally say that price should be following the 15 minute 50 to the downside with the Moxie indicator below zero. However, in the recent past, we have seen where price was flagging sideways did ultimately use the hourly 50 for support and then actually use the 15 minute 200 for support and got up a little bit. But that section, and if I come over here, we can see it a little bit better. That section that I was referring to was right here and right here. And I think we're just in a different era. I think we're just in a different part of what the market's doing. Uh, the, some of the Fed heads went around today and they kept reaffirming that they are going to take interest rates higher than expected and they're going to hold them there for longer than expected. So everyone keeps talking about this pivot thing. And they're like, it's not going to happen. Don't think that there's going to be a pivot. So um, I think that the whole bounce that we had last week on Thursday with the CPI report uh, was basically a short squeeze. So I, th I think that is why I'm saying that the whole environment is different. This was uh, this was something different. This was actually like a kind of a lit run. It was more than a short squeeze. There really was buying that was going on here. Uh, a lot of things were moving around. Uh, this move here was almost like an algorithm, Jack, uh, that computers basically bought it up because it just went so darn quickly straight up for two days that you had to pretty much just jump on board and go for it. And that seemed way more indicative of a short squeeze than anything else. So that's why I'm a little bit mixed between, you know, are we going to find the hourly 50 a little bit more support for temporarily or do we actually kind of pull back here a little bit further? Um, and if we kind of look at this, I'm noticing that price is up, Moxie indicator down, that could be the beginning of this. And then don't forget that there is still a gap here that we might actually have to retest. So gosh, if we even look at the daily chart, you know, that's why I was saying that if we go here, we might actually need to get price back down to fill that gap. So that's, uh, that's a possibility. And if we look back at the hourly chart, one other difference is that when price was hanging out here, you will notice that we got higher high and higher MOX indicators. So that's good. That supported it. We didn't get negative divergence until that section, but now we're getting negative divergence. So I do think that there is something different about this, this section uh, as far as the market goes. Now, if I take this and then we reference it, um, well, let me show you first the, the VIX. Uh, because if we look at this really big picture and maybe actually need to switch over to the monthly and weekly, um, there is a there is a trend line here. You'll notice right here that price has been holding that trend line on the VIX pretty well. Now, another interesting thing is the VIX is right at the um, weekly 
200 and the monthly 50, all that kind of stuff. And if we do look down a little bit lower, the other interesting thing that I'm seeing is kind of this, this divergence start to show up. Look here, the VIX went down, MOX indicator went up. The MOX indicator is very close to crossing over zero. And we are now back over the hourly 50. This looks like something is starting to develop. Okay, the VIX and the UVXY, I'll show you the UVXY, um, does look like something is building. Now, anybody, any of you who have been paying attention to me for, I don't know, however long and heard me talk about all the various, you know, you know settings and setups that I have, uh, this looks to be a potential trampoline move. So price below the 50, but the MOXIE indicator above zero is a trampoline move, but it hasn't fired yet. So I have to call it a potential trampoline move. Uh, they also notice we are pretty much right at a double bottom. So I think between the double bottom and the potential trampoline move on the daily chart really says something. The other thing to note is look at this massive divergence. Price has been going down, generally trending down for, uh, I don't know, a few weeks, a couple weeks. Notice that the Moxie indicator has been green and climbing steadily towards zero every single day. So I think we're also somewhere getting close into here. Now, again, nothing has really fired here. I am starting to build a position here. Maybe there's a double bottom right there. But I also want you to just see going back here, the last time we kind of saw the beginning of a move, um, that the UVXY can actually be very, very tricky. And you can see it actually closed on the lows before spiking up like that. So it can just be a really crazy vehicle. So um, you kind of have to have just some experience with it to understand what's going on. But notice that the MOXIE indicator is very similar to what it was doing then, you know, basically climbing every single day despite price going down. There is your divergence. And we're starting to see that kind of divergence show up on the UVXY right now currently. I mean, look, you know, again, look at that. Look at that divergence. Okay. So I do think something's starting to build um, on the bullish side for the UVXY, which means the bearish side for the um, market. Now, the other thing we can look at is if we look at the Dow, and uh, I'm seeing indications, again, that this thing is looking pretty uh, extended. Um, I mean, this, this is just wildly up there. This is really, really up there. You can see it was even very oversold right there when it pulled away from the moving averages. And notice that price is up here and the MOXIE indicator is down like this. So um, this is starting to look like it wants to fall off of the hourly 50, which I would imagine would head down to somewhere around the daily 21. Now, if the Dow heads down to the daily 21, the SPY and the NASDAQ and, uh, and the Russell IWM, they're all going to head, they're all going to do the same thing. They're just going to do it proportionately. And so if the Dow heads to its daily 50 or daily eight, sorry, daily 21 EMA, that means to me that probably the SPY is going to dip below its 21 EMA. And I think that's the same gap thing that I was talking about uh, for the SPY. Um, the other thing is that if we look at this and we zoom in, you know, there's also that gap basically here. And so check it out. Where does this gap get filled? Right at the 21 EMA. Okay. So I think that there's something there. And then if we look at the 15, it has been following the 15 minute 50 down and the MOXIE indicator has been down too. Now I could show you some of the other indexes. Basically they're just in different variations and some of them are a little bit less uh, readable than others. That's why I'm trying to show you the things that I see best, which is in the Dow. And then we can also look at the XLF. And the thing that I'm also seeing about the XLF is that it's very similar to what the Dow is doing. I mean, it looks almost exactly like the Dow. Uh, it's very extended. And I think that the next step, whenever this really actually gets going, I think the next step is going to be price to the daily 21. And then we'll have to see about a bounce. But I think the first move is down to the daily 21. You can see price up like that. Moxie indicator there. It's been following the 15 minute 50, that kind of thing. Now it can bounce a little bit, come up here and do whatever, and then roll over. We can do that. And keep in mind, we do have options expiry tomorrow, Friday. So by the time you guys see this, uh, it'll be We'll be seeing what kind of craziness we had with options expiry. Uh, generally speaking, if we do happen to get a bounce right here, if price bounces up over a downtrending 15 minute minute 50, notice that the MOXIE indicator is very much below zero and is showing absolutely zero signs of strength. So any move up over the 15 minute 50 is what I call an inverse trampoline move. Price should not be over the 50 if the MOXIE indicator is below zero. So a bounce from somewhere around here is basically more more information for a short is uh, how I'm kind of viewing it. How about we take a look at another situation, Goldman Sachs. And actually, if we look 
Uh, let me come over here and we'll do a, let me show it to you on the bigger time frame. So there's, um, you know, actually the weekly was pretty good on that one. So yeah, if we look at this, uh, yeah, notice a couple things. So if we look at the weekly, you can see prices up here at the third ATR. You can also see that price is right here in uh, previous resistance. Then you can see that there's a giant gap between price and the moving average. So all of that shows me that there should at least be some sort of pullback happenings or developing on something like this. So if you look at the daily chart, just wildly, wildly overbought, it is way outside. Look at that thing. It's off the eight, it's outside of the third ATR. That's like a blow off top. You know, that's like an exuberant run. Chug, 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 boom. You know, exuberant room, and then we get a, a rollover. So that's another thing that I'm looking at. It looks like, uh, you know, this last little spurt that we had in the market looks like a kind of a topping pattern, blow off top, something like that. And so I think that, um, you know, even if there's a little bounce, but I think basically the next step is that we start breaking below the hourly 50 and we start heading back down to the uh, daily 21, which again would go with just about with that, uh, the gap that we had. So I think anything on the high side is going to be short lived. And I think we should be actually looking to the downside. Again, Mox indicator does not look strong at all. So any bounces should be shortable. And uh, generally speaking, I think we're going to continue to kind of move, move down like that. Uh, another interesting one. If you look at the semis, um, I really kind of wanted to short this earlier, but I still, I just needed to kind of stick to my guns on this. Um, it was, it was definitely looking again like a shortable opportunity right there. Why? Well, a couple things. Notice that gap between price and the moving average. Notice that price was outside of that third ATR. And then I'll just notice that price was basically at the 200. So what does that do? 50, 200, you know, 50 maneuver. So like that. Um, so I think that there's still a little bit more downside to this right there on say the semis. So that would go with the spy and the down and everything else that I'm saying, basically going to the 21. And if it does that, then watch out for maybe a little bit of bounce. We'll have to see how that goes. And then I think we actually roll over in a more major way. So down, up, down, I think is generally the theme of what's going on. Um, in order to do that from this point, I do think that price needs to fall off of the hourly 50. And if I'm correct about that, then price should be running into the underside of a downtrending uh, 15 minute 50 with, again, the box indicator below zero. So even if even if there's a bounce for some reason, um, the MOXIE indicator is telling me that it should not be trusted. We'll keep that in mind about the semis. <clears throat> um, if you don't want to trade that directly, what you can do is actually trade the SOXS. And uh, what's pretty wild, and I'm not sure if this is like, you know, capitulation volume or, you know, people getting out, like what, uh, they have a problem, they need to get out, or is this buying? Look at the volume. Look at the volume. Let me get this cursor out of the way. There you go. Look at the volume that's suddenly coming here. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So follow some footsteps, see what's going on. Um, the other thing is this kind of looks like an inverted head and shoulders. So we'll have to see if that's right. And I just think that there's probably a little bit more of a move up like that. Uh, I mean, this thing is very, very oversold. Now I know it's the inverse ETF and you can't trade that directly like that, you know, make uh, judgments from that. But my interpretation of the regular semiconductor index plus the inverse is kind of giving me some clues. All right, uh, then if we look at the TLT, and you can see here, look at that, you guys see the elf shoe? Then also let me show you this. So there was a pattern within a pattern. So you can see that this, you had price below the 50, but the MOX indicator above zero. What is that? Trampoline move, okay? And how about this? Leg, heel, arch of the foot, ball of the foot, elf toe. So you got that, that elf shoe. I mean, look, it looked perfect. I mean, that's a beautiful one. And then on the 15 minute time frame, look right there. Trampoline move, price below the 50, but the MOXIE indicator above zero is a trampoline move and you shot up like that. Now I have a feeling at some point around here, this too is probably gonna pull back. And generally speaking, uh, if TLT goes down, the market goes down, that kind of thing. So I think this is looking a little bit exhausted. You can see that there's still a giant gap between price and the hourly 50. And I think that this is going to come down a bit. Um, you can see here, there's also a big gap here and it ran right into not only the third ATR, but also the daily 50 SMA. Um, now, I just think there's a pullback. This might actually end up going higher, but for right now, there's a pullback. And if you look here, the reason I say that is if you just look at the history of how the TLT moves, there's a lot of jostling around. You know, it can still go up, but there's a lot of up and down in there. So typically when it gets to a high point like that, it does want to pull back. So I'm just saying that it's kind of at a high spot. 
and I would probably expect some sort of pullback from there. All right, then another thing that I've been looking at, uh, let's go here and look at XOM, Exxon Mobile. And this is um, kind of a proxy of what I'm looking at for the energy sector. The energy sector, XLE, and I'll show you that too, they're looking also pretty overbought. And part of my indication is we've been seeing this, we've been seeing price move up and up and up and up, notice the MOXIE indicator moving down, and boom, right on target, you got the MOXIE price trigger. Now, just like I said with the SPY and the Dow, the first move is to the 21 EMA on the daily chart. Okay, so that's what I'm expecting. You know, SPY will probably go below the 21. I think the Dow will go to the 21. And same thing with the semis. I think they'll go to somewhere around the 21 EMA before you get a bounce. But uh, then you get a bounce. And now look, we have an inverse trampling move. So price over the 50, but the MOXIE indicator below zero. That is a you know, potentially inverse trampoline move. That's what I'm seeing. And so that tells me that this up move should not be trusted. In fact, this might end up being a shortable area right in through here. And then we'll just have to see how much noise before it finally starts heading back down. Now, another view on that, if I take the uh, weekly chart, even the even the monthly, I guess you could say, is look how very extended that is. So on the monthly chart, there is a big gap here between price and the moving average. And you're also up here at that third ATR. So just there's at least reason for these things to pull back. And I think that is the name of the game of what I'm kind of seeing in here through a lot of these tickers. Um, XLE basically, you know, looking the same way. Uh, it was basically an inverse trampoline move. It just fudged it a little bit. And I'd be looking for some chop and then a rollover. And just keep in mind, we are basically at a double top area. You know, it tried, tried to overshoot it just a little bit. But, you know, if this whole global recession talk kind of really actually comes to fruition, which I think it is, then uh, we could be seeing demand of oil actually go down. And so that might all go down too. So recession and oil going down. Um, yeah, so I think that's some interesting stuff. If you're interested to play it, you could look at DRIP. DRIP is the leveraged inverse ETF of that. And um, as I said, you can't, can't necessarily study the inverse ETFs um, because you really want to study the underlying, but this is really looking like it wants to go higher. So remember, um, double bottom and you have a trampoline move. So price below the 50, but the moxie indicator above zero. It looks like it wants to go higher, which means uh, oil, oil sector, that kind of stuff wants to go lo lower. And just even speaking of oil uh, itself, I guess no, that won't work. You want USO. USO, not looking very strong, is it? So USO going down. Uh, I was telling the moxie subscribers the other day that we're kind of uh, between a mix here. Uh, we were kind of seeing maybe a potential 50, 250 right there with the 8 or the 21. But then I said that that was then uh, um, right here. You could see that the problem was that price was running into the underside of a downtrending hourly 50 with the MOXIE indicator below zero. And it seems to me that, that the hourly chart is actually overpowering the daily chart. And I think we should probably expect this is going to roll back over. This doesn't look super strong. So oil, oil looks like it's going down. Now, funny enough, to um, offset that, oil going down, but natural gas going up. And that, uh, yeah, look at this. I mean, <laughs> as, as uh, interesting as that is, um, yeah, I think that's what's happening. You can see there's a double bottom. So basically leg, heel, arch of the foot, ball of the foot, and I'm looking for the elf toe. And on the hourly chart, what do we have? Trampoline move, price below the 50, moxie indicator above zero. So we're in it, we're taking this. Um, now, I don't have, you know, huge expectations. I have reasonable expectations. I think we'll probably go somewhere like that to kind of fill that gap. Uh, and then we'll have to wait and watch. But generally speaking, natural gas going into winter, and we've been hearing all the stuff about England, you know, Europe, and um, the American uh, liquid natural gas companies not being able to produce enough. So there could be a shortage and Russia and all that kind of stuff. So there might actually be an increased demand for natural gas. And so we could see this continue to move up, even though maybe oil as a whole might actually be going down. So interesting stuff out there. Uh, now, here's another fun one on NFLX. And actually, I'll need it over on this side of things. NFLX. Now, with this one, there here is just a, a setup that I'm seeing out there. Netflix is did it, and I'm seeing this setup in another, another stock. So watch this and tell me if you guys see the exact same scenario in this next stock that I'm going to show you. All right, so notice uh, this was earnings. So giant move up like that and look what happened. Got very overbought. 
right there on the daily chart. You can see a giant gap between price and the moving average. And what about this? Up there hitting a third ATR, isn't it? And then on the hourly chart, same thing. It was riding the third ATR, giant gap between price and the hourly 50. And when did this thing stop going up and actually start its downtrend? It did it when it sliced through the 15 minute 50 with the Moxie indicator below zero. And then what? Just followed it all the way down until it finally found an area that it wanted to bounce. Okay, and you can see that we also slice in right through the hourly 50 and then just boom, down it goes. Now let's check, a look, check this out. If we look at GRWG, this is a cannabis stock and this was earnings. Tell me this doesn't look exactly the same, right? Kind of cool, huh? So the interesting thing in through here again, you know, earnings, just giant move up, maybe a, a massive short squeeze, something like that. But outside of the third ATR, way off of the moving average there on the daily chart, still again, giant gap between price and uh, the hourly 50. And then look here, starting to break the 15 minute 50 Moxie indicator below zero. Same exact setup. So we decided to take it and then we'll see where it goes over the next few days or a couple weeks. But I'm just seeing a lot of things that are uh, very high, very extended, and we're seeing some weakness. And it seems to me that the market is likely to start moving down uh, right about here. So take your pick, see what you can do. And if you guys are, if you like the way I trade and how I do this kind of stuff, come on over to Moxie Trader, uh, the Moxie Trader room. You can find me at profitpilot.com or, or over at simplertrading.com. And uh, yeah, come check it out. I'm in the room all the time do, posting lots and lots of stuff like this. All right, guys, thanks again. Catch you in the next one. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.